Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today. Um, in this talk, I would like to talk about uh, something I uh, like uh, a lot in computer science, which is algorithms, and in particular, uh, graph algorithms that are uh, graphs are great data structures and almost useful for every problem you solve every, in your everyday uh, code. Okay. So, um, the title says traversing mazes. Mazes means graph. So, in this talk, we are going to talk about maze traversals related problems. And, uh, of course, mazes are the everyday data structure for the role playing gamers here today. I'm quite sure that many of you are, uh, have played Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Okay. So, this talk seems to be a, an uh, wants to be an, an uh, each eaker's guide for getting out from dungeons, okay? Um, the, the second part of the title is algorithmic adventures. Uh, algorithms are the most important and durable part of computer science, and uh, they may be studied and analyzed in a way which is language independent, machine independent, but in this talk we are going to talk uh, about Python. Right, so we're trying to analyze the algorithm, uh, the algorithms and the algorithmic parts in the slides from a very Pythonic standpoint. This is my, uh, my goal for this talk. And by the way, this is not supposed to be an algorithmic class, right? So this is, uh, uh, I will provide some very introductory um, stuff. I'll try to brief recap something that I'm quite sure that you're already aware of. Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah, actually, you're right. Is it okay? Yeah, sorry for that. This is the first time I used the IPython notebook to make presentations, so it's, it's quite, a, quite a mess. Okay. So the, um, let me briefly uh, recap some basics for algorithm analysis. We need a technique to compare the efficiency of algorithm without worrying about the implementation, well, the machines and the, the language. So we have two different techniques. We have the RAM model computation. We have the asymptotic analysis of the worst case complexity. In other, in other words, the no-win scenario. So we're, uh, uh, we're interested in the worst case here. This is in the worst case, and we have the RAM model computation. The RAM model of computation simply tells us that uh, each simple operation, such as plus, um, minus, if, calls, takes exactly one time step. Uh, loops and functions are not considered simple operations, and each memory access takes exactly one time step. Thus, we have we may have as many memory as we want, and the run model takes no uh, notice on whether an item is in cache or in disk, so or is on disk. So there's n n all the details are um, right behind the, uh, the, the all the stuff, but we um, don't think about it. Okay. Um, of course, we have different. Uh, notations to uh, compute to analyze the complexity of algorithm. We have the worst case complexity, so the the big O, the also known as the big O notation, the Tatha notation, so the average case complexity and the best case complexity. The big O notation originally was the big Omicron, actually, and tells uh, the the upper bound uh, of the asymptotic upper bound for a function and the complexity of a of a of an algorithm. For instance, see we say that the time of our algorithm belongs to the o to the n square. This means that the um, for 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 a large enough value of n, which is the size of the input of our algorithm, the um, the the time complexity, the asymptotic time complexity, will be, will be bounded by the n square function. Okay, this is just a very brief recap for all this stuff. This is just to um, introduce the uh, some topics that we will uh, talk about later. And just for your information, there are infinite dominance relations. This table shows you um, the different the relations among the different 
some of the well-known different uh, asymptotic computation from the constant time uh, to the, the factorial, which is the, uh, the heaviest, uh, the heaviest one. Okay. So we'll talk about graphs. Graphs are the one of the unifying themes in computer science. Uh, graphs are a great data structure, a powerful mental model, and graphs can, represents all, can represent almost all kinds of structure and systems. You may think about transportation networks, social networks. Uh, nowadays, social network analysis is a great uh, research field and very active research field. Uh, dependency networks, for instance, you may think to the uh, graph representing the dependencies of a piece of code or the, 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 the dependencies of a software package that should be installed on your machine. Graphs can, comes in different flavors with different expressivity, of course. Um, in a nutshell, the graph terminology, we, have, we uh, wrote the graph as G as a tuple of V and E. V is the set of vertices, E is the set of edges, vertices with an edge, um, within an edge between them are adjacent, the edge is then incident in this, uh, in this vertices. We may have a subgraphs, so G prime, which is V prime, E prime is a, uh, is a graph where V prime is a subset of V and E prime is all the, the edges incidents in the nodes of V prime. We have the notion of path, so we have a path is a subgraph where edges connect the nodes in a sequence. And finally we have a cycle, which is like a path, but with the difference that the last edge links the first node in the path to the, to the, first, to the last node to the first one. Graphs, as I said, comes in different flavors. We may have directed or indirected graphs. In the figure, you may see that the edges have uh, and, and, and the notion of directions. Uh, there are unweighted or weighted graphs, uh, where sorry, where the uh, there is a weight on the on the edges. Uh, there may be simple or non-simple graphs. The non-simple part here means that there are some. Uh, edges that make that may require some special handling in your in our algorithm. For instance, uh, in this case, solve loops or loops in general. Uh, we will see another example of this um, in a few minutes. And uh, sometimes there will be um, gr uh, edges that may may be incident multiple times in the same node. In that case, there will be. Uh, that will be a uh, multigraph, not graph, actually. Okay, so we may have cyclic versus acyclic graphs. Uh, an instance, for instance, a cyclic graph is a tree. Uh, tr trees are connected, acyclic and undirected graphs. Or we may have the, so the well-known uh, and the so-called DAG, which stands for uh, directed acyclic graphs. And with DAGs, we may apply topological sorting and stuff like that. This is, uh, these are all concepts for, uh, from very basic introductory algorithmic class. Okay? And finally, we may have unlabeled versus labeled graphs, where there is a label on nodes, so on vertices on the graph. Uh, graphs may be sparse or maybe dense. Uh, in which refers to the number of edges in the graphs. Uh, and last but not least, um, graphs may be explicit or implicit. This is what I um, was referring before when I told you that graphs are a great data structure and a powerful man mental model. Because uh, sometimes when you have to deal with a, with a problem, you have to solve such kind of problem, you may think to the problem as in, uh, as a graph problem, so you may represent your data, your problem as a graph, and you may apply graph algorithms to your to your problem. So here we here we go to the uh, graph representation. So finally, we we start to uh, see some code in action. Um, one of the most common way to represent graphs is the adjacency lists list and something like that. Okay, what is, Addition lists are one of the most intuitive uh, ways to implement graphs. And for each node, we can access a list or a set, as we will see in a few minutes. 
of its neighbors. So this is the idea, and this is the graph we are going to, to use as an example in the next slides, okay? So we have nodes labeled from A to H, and for simplicity, we assume that we number all the nodes from A to H, assigning a number that goes uh, from zero to seven, so uh, N minus one. In Python, we want to implement a adjacency set, set, which is, um, in this case, we uh, instantiate all the nodes from A to H, and then we uh, create the structure N, which is an, a list of adjacency uh, of, of sets, okay? Um, before, uh, just, just to mention, before Python 2.7 or Python 3, um, you would use the set constructor here, but uh, now we, you're, you may use the, the, this expression um, to, to, to create sets of literals, right? So in the, in the brackets, you may uh, instantiate uh, sets of literals. Okay. The name N uh, has been used since in graph theory, N of, uh, of V, which uh, where uh, V is a vertex, uh, stands for the neighborhood of node V or vertex V, right? So in this case, we may uh, write len of N of F, which is three in this case. F is the node, okay, which is the degree of the node. And then we may also test for the neighborhood membership. Uh, B in NDA with this simple instruction and it returns true, okay? So this is for neighborhood membership. And we will try to discuss on the different complexity uh, depending on the different implementation of the structure we're going to use, okay? So in the first example, we use a set. In this other example, we try to uh, modify it a little bit and we use an addition list, so we replace the sets with the lists. Okay, so actually the code doesn't reflect this, sorry for that, I didn't realize it before, uh, sorry. Uh, the the uh, braces should be substituted, of course, with square brackets. Okay, sorry for that. In this case, again, we have the same uh, expressivity, okay, so we may apply again len of n of f, which is three, again, so the degree of the node, the number of node incident in that graph, and we may test for membership, uh, for a neighborhood membership. So B in NDA uh, returns uh, true. But this time, neighborhood memberships takes theta of N of, of uh, V, which is the vertex. In case of sets, in the average case, the neighborhood membership is cost in time, okay? So this is just the first different of the, the two of these two very simple implementations. This can be problematic in case of dense graphs or big graphs. Okay, we could leverage on, for instance, we could uh, use these implementations or so sort um, adjacent lists. We may sort the the adjacent lists, and we may rely on the sorting. Um, on, the, on the data or sorted, uh, the sorted data to apply a binary search in order to test for the membership, okay? In that case, we may uh, reduce the, the, the complexity to log of the size of the neighborhood. But in the general case, if the graph is big, maybe uh, an implementation based on sets on the average case would fit uh, better. Okay, this is just the first uh, thing. This is just a, an int for uh, more complex problems. Yet another trick. We can substitute the uh, lists or the sets with a dictionary, okay? So this time we implement the adjacencies with dictionaries. Um, this is a sort of sparse weighted graph representation. In this, uh, in this uh, example, we also embed in the graph representation the weight, okay? So we increase the expressivity of our graph. We um, also are, in, with this kind of representation, we are also able to represent the weights of the, of the, of the edges, okay? So in case, of, uh, in case of weighted graphs, this is a very intuitive 
uh, way to represent graphs. Again, we are able to test for membership to calculate the degree of the node in, with exactly the same syntax as before. But now we are also able to get the weight for uh, a particular hedge. For instance, if we are interested in getting the weight for the, the, the edges connecting node A to B, the weight is two, okay? And this is, this is the, how we uh, handle this. Okay, very, fair enough. A more flexible approach. Actually, Python, uh, in its um, documentation, suggests this on, uh, a good way to implement a, a, an implementation pattern for graphs. If you're interested, please take a look at the, at the, um, at the, the link uh, on the slide. But basically, the, the, the idea is to represent a graph in a very dynamic and flexible way by means of Python dictionary. Okay, so we embed the nodes, uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, considering the adjacencies uh, structure, okay? So uh, you embed the nodes as uh, keys of a dictionary and every, uh, every value associated in the dictionary is a, a list of other keys in order to get the, the, the corresponding edge in the, in the structure, okay? And this implementation is quite similar to what happens in the well-known NetworkX uh, library, okay? NetworkX is the reference uh, Python library for graph algorithms. Everything I'm going to, 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 to talk about here uh, today is already implemented in NetworkX, okay? So my, my goal uh, here uh, is not to, to show how all this stuff is uh, made in network X, but just to um, reason, tr just to uh, get more um, details on how you could handle all this stuff in Python and uh, what are the difference of every um, possible decisions you may uh, made on uh, graphs. Okay. Uh, again. Uh, following the implementation pattern, we may implement uh, a dictionary of adjacency sets, okay? This is a very simple implementation. We drop the weights information and we um, rely on the fact that we're dealing with uh, nodes labeled with single letters, so we uh, create a set from, uh, from the string. So it's very simple, okay? So this implementation is very, very similar to the former, uh, to the first one, but uh, drops the, the weights information. And again, it relies on a dictionary with sets for adjacencies, okay? And uh, with this structure, we are allowed to test for membership, for a neighborhood membership, which is still a constant time. And we may calculate the degree of a node. The other well-known structure to represent graphs is the adhesion symmetrix. And um, in adhesion symmetrix, we list all the neighbors for each node, okay? So uh, we want to store a value indicating the presence or the absence of the edge in the graph connecting two nodes, which is through or false, for instance, zero or one, one or zero, respectively, okay? And we may try to implement uh, an addition symmetrics with nested lists. Uh, we may argue that this is not uh, actually a matrix, this is a list of a lists, okay? But just uh, implementation details about Python. This is um, just, to, uh, just, to, just to do a sort of proof of concept, okay? So um, with this structure, we are able to uh, implement, we are able to test for membership, as usual. We are able to, to, to calculate the degree of the nodes. Uh, and of course, you may substitute this homemade implementation of the matrix using, for instance, NumPy arrays, okay? So which is, of course, even more efficient. And if we uh, will have time, uh, I will, uh, I would like to, to talk about the SciPy uh, graph implementation uh, already uh, in the library of, uh, of SciPy. 
Okay. Uh, the properties of the adhesion sim matrix. Uh, the adhesion sim matrix is a great structure. Okay, and and um, I, I thought to 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 talk about the the differences of adhesion sim sets, adhesion sim lists in general, and adhesion sim matrix because uh, in uh, algorithmic class, algorithm class uh, in the, the university, um, sometimes there should be some misconceptions on the use of the two different structures, okay? So, on the one hand, we have the additions list where we uh, are interested in storing the, uh, only the information related to the existing uh, edges between uh, vertices. In the addition matrix, we represent all the information, okay? So sometimes there is, should be a misconception that you want to use one structure uh, when you have very small graph or uh, the other one when you have a, 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 big, a bigger graph, okay? But we will talk here about this uh, in a few slides. Uh, Adjunction symmetrics F uh, has great, uh, some uh, very interesting properties. The, di the diagonal matrix, the diagonal of the matrix, sorry, is uh, equals to uh, an array of zero. Okay, so uh, as long as we don't allow self loops, so we are dealing with pseudo graph, uh, the di diagonal is always zero. In case of undirected graphs, the matrix is symmetric. Okay, so if we're um, we're dealing with undirected graphs, we uh, may leverage the some very efficient matrix representation for triangular matrix. Extending the addition symmetrics to allow for edge weights is very trivial. Instead of storing truth values, zero, one, we may store the, the values of the weights. Let's make an example. Um, in this case, we're going to represent the, the, uh, the weighted uh, addition symmetrics. And we store, we use this uh, syntax in the first line to, to store the infinite uh, weight, okay? So in this case, if we want to uh, test for the membership here, um, we, we should check if the, the values corresponding to uh, A and B is uh, less than infinite, which is in this case is true, uh, but it is not true in case of C and E, so there is no uh, there's no edge connecting C and D, or in other words, the, 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 um, the weight of the edges is, um, is infinite, okay. And finally, we may calculate the degree by summing on the row of the matrix. In this case, we, re, uh, we apply minus one at the end because we want to remove the diagonal element, okay. So in case of A node, the degree is five, which is the number of uh, uh, the number of uh, elements in the row except for the diagonal, okay? And finally, some um, consideration about the efficient graph representation. This is a great book, okay? This is uh, from Jeremy Spinred. It's called Feel, uh, Efficient Graph Representation. Uh, he says in this book that um, there is a classical misconception. Uh, in general, after uh, taking an algorithm class, uh, we may end up considering uh, that there are two methods representing a graph in a computer science, addition symmetrices and addition lists. It is faster to work with addition symmetrices, but uh, they use more spaces. On the other hand, you may choose addition lists uh, in case the, the, uh, the resource, the, the, the space resources is the most important. Uh, to you. There are many interesting ways to represent graphs, actually. Uh, addition symmetrices and addition lists are just two uh, ways to represent graphs, not the only two ways, okay? For instance, you may have addition, edge sets, edge lists, or incident matrix, okay? Which is something a little bit different from the addition symmetrix. Uh, there are specialized representation for different graph types. For instance, trees are specialized versions of graphs and they're represented in a very different way uh, from general purpose graphs. Interval graphs 
is another very interesting example. The rule of thumb that uh, he suggests is decide on the asymptotic overall complexity and decide which is the structure that best uh, works for your particular problem and for your particular data. Okay, so this is just uh, the very interesting um, consideration about this. Okay, so here we are to the traversal of mazes. Okay, so we have a mazes. Okay, um, a partial traversal of a typical role-playing dungeon. Okay, you may think to the rooms as the edge of a graph. And you may think, uh, sorry, to, as in the nodes of graph, and you may think to the doors connecting the different rooms as the edges of the graph, okay? The traversal tree is the finest, is defined by your track, so you, by, by the, uh, the track you apply while you're traversing the maze. The fringe, uh, or the frontier, or the traversal queue consists to the neighboring rooms, okay? The remaining darkened rooms here in the uh, in the maze are the nodes that have not uh, that have not been discovered yet. Okay, so this is a, a very simple and uh, trivial example of a classical problem represented by means of a graph structure. Okay, in this case, the graph is implicit. We have no uh, explicit graph in this representation. Uh, for the following slides, I'll be using the dictionary with additions sets for graph representation. Okay. Mm, one of the most famous traversal algorithms for mazes is the one by Tremo. Uh, and um, Lucas in 1891 in his Recreation Mathematique uh, book uh, explains this algorithm in this way. I'm, I'm trying to, to, to quote this one. Uh, to completely traverse all the passages of a labyrinth twice from any initial point, simply follow the rules posted by Tremo, making each entry to or exit from an intersection. These rules may be summarized as follows. When possible, avoid passing an intersection you have already visited, or avoid taking passages you have already traversed. Uh, is this not a prudent approach which also applies in everyday life? Okay, so the basic idea here is uh, to, um, to get the information every time we, we traverse an edge, so a connection between two nodes, we, um, we store uh, entry or exit information. In this, in this case, we would like to uh, not go over the same steps and the same uh, ways uh, more than once, okay? <clears throat> the basic idea is backtracking. So the idea is start walking in any direction you want and then backtrack whenever you came to a dead end or an intersection that you are uh, already walked through to avoid cycles. This is the basic idea and we will see uh, in details this one. Okay, so um, sorry for the, the formatting. This is maybe due to the, the font size. I don't know. No, sorry for that. Uh, we may have this um, function in Python, which is the arbitrary walk, okay? We assume, as I said before, we assume a graph represented as a dictionary of efficiency sets, and we have an input, an uh, S node, which is the starting point, okay? So we select the random starting point, or the, pon the point where we are now. We have two structures, the P and the Q, uh, structures, P is the predecessors, Q is the sets of uh, nodes to visit. We select randomly, uh, we, we add to the, to the, to the set Q the, the, the starting point and we iterate while, Q, while the, 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 the set Q has elements inside. We pick one element in the Q completely arbitrary Okay, by using the q.pop method. And for every node which is uh, in the, um, uh, which is incident to the, the u node but has not been visited yet, we uh, add this node to the queue and then we store the predecessor. Okay, so in this case, we walk to the, to the graph one step, um, step by step. Okay. Um, 
Actually, this algorithm uh, will traverse the single connected component. Okay, so we'll try, we will, we're, uh, we will find the connected components of a graph starting from the, uh, from a given node. P is the predecessor's tree. If you uh, would like to be, um, if we would like to get all the connected components in a graph, we may iterate uh, on the every, every node in a graph, and we call the walk function, and we uh, simply um, update the structure uh, scene, which is a set of visited nodes. Okay, so far so good. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, the time complexity of this algorithm is theta of e plus b, so this the which is the complexity of almost every traversal algorithm. Okay. Uh, just uh, another detail about this: the the important part here is that when we uh, select the nodes we want to to visit, we use we rely on the 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 pop uh, method here on the set, which uh, picks randomly an element in the set. Okay, so uh, this is why this is called uh, an arbitrary walk. Um, but if we want to go deep, so we want to apply the uh, the so-called depth-first traversal, uh, we might use uh, another trick. So instead of picking randomly the uh, the the element in the in the, in the structure, we might use a structure that has a precise, a, a predefined protocol to get the elements. In this case, in the case of depth-first traversal, is the uh, last in first out protocol. Okay, uh, this is a recursive implementation, but in Python, uh, we may, uh, or in general, we may every uh, always translate a recursive implementation to an, an iterative one. In this case, we rely on the list structure. Okay, so uh, every time we uh, end up to a node which is uh, which is new, uh, we extend the, the 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 fringe to the the set of uh, incident uh, nodes to the to the um, uh, to the new one. Okay. Um, in work implementation, we use set. Okay, so we would risk having the same node scheduled for more than one visit. Okay, so this is why the depth first traversal is uh, more efficient in the general case. Uh, in DFS, we use the LI uh, FOQs, so every node is scheduled for visit only once. If you want to generalize this traversal, we may uh, write this function, which is traverse, and um, the, 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 the type of traversal we're going to make depends on the structure we're going to use for the fringe, okay? In general, this is a set which is very similar to the arbitrary walk already shown a few slides ago. If we uh, use the, uh, the, the list, so the Python list, this will end up to be uh, Deft first reversal. Uh, using yield uh, allows for lazy iterations, so um, we uh, may create an, uh, a generator in Python, which is very, very useful, and it's more efficient for dense and big graphs, okay? And that's it for, um, yeah, thank you. And that's it for um, uh, mazes, okay? Um, but what about the infinite mazes and unweighted shortest part? Uh, so far, the over eager behavior of the depth first traversal haven't, hasn't been a problem. Actually, the, the problem of the de de depth first traversal or the depth first search is that it may run for ages and never get back. Okay? So, in, in case of very, very big graph, uh, graphs, the depth first reversal is not a good, is not a good choice. Okay. In fact, in case of visiting of crawling the graph of the web, the depth first reversal is not the, the solution. Okay. In general, the, the very, uh, the, the, the solution is another kind of traversal, which is the breadth first search uh, that I'm going to talk uh, about now. And 
What if we would like to follow the shortest path in traversing the maze? So in this case, the shortest path means the minimum number of uh, intersections, okay? The first attempt is the iterative deepening draft first search. Uh, I'm not going into the details of this algorithm. The basic idea is that this uh, algorithm applies the draft first search traversal uh, many times with different uh, depth limits. Okay, but this algorithm led to another well-known algorithm, which is the breadth first search. The breadth first search is very similar to the ITER DFS, so the iterative version of the depth first search, but it uses a different uh, structure. Okay, in this case, the depth, breadth first search traversal uses an, um, a structure which is a queue. Uh, and uh, fo that follows the uh, FIFO, so first come, first served, uh, which is the first in, first out, in other words. And uh, we may implement this in Python using the DQ uh, structure, which is in the standard library. And this is very, uh, very simple and very uh, trivial to, uh, to implement. The DQ actually uh, corresponds to a double-linked queue in Python, as you may know, uh, and uh, in this case we rely on the pop-left uh, function to get the element we want to uh, start visiting, we start traversing, and uh, the pop-left is cost and time because of the implementation of the uh, DQ uh, structure. The complexity of the overall breadth first search is always, uh, again, uh, theta of the E, uh, the dimension of edges plus the dimension of vertices. And it can be demonstrated that the BFS calculates always a correct answer. Uh, in case of weighted graphs, another well-known problem in computer science and in algorithms in general is the shortest path, but this time the short shortest path means the path with the minimum, with the minimum cost, sorry. Uh, as this uh, comic says, uh, I would like to uh, have a pillow talk, so uh, we will talk about the Dijkstra algorithm, not the Belmoford, as in this XKCD uh, comic. Okay, the, um, the Dijkstra shortest path on directed asynchronous graph relies on the relax function. We, the basic idea of the relax function is to propagate the knowledge about the shortest path one uh, step at a time. We look for an improvement to the currently known distance to v by trying to take the shortcut through uh, u, which is the, the uh, vertex we want to test. Okay, if this shortcut, uh, if the, it is a shortcut, so if we pass through the u node uh, cost less than the already computed shortest path, we will follow that direction. And we test this one step at a time. Okay? Okay, so, uh, yeah. The DICE algorithm Python exploits the IPQ structure, which is a priority queue that allows us to get the nodes. Uh, every time we add a node to this structure, we uh, are guaranteed to um, respect the EPFI uh, relation, so um, we add the uh, the nodes uh, in in order. This is a priority queue, so this is a queue or an ordered queue, and we get the element uh, with EPOP, which, which returns the the element with the least priority. Okay. Um, the difference in the relations between the Dijkstra algorithm and Bradford search algorithm is that mm, Dijkstra allows assigning distances other than one for each step. Meanwhile, the Bradford search basically just expands the search by one step, okay? Which happens to have the effect of finding the smallest uh, number of steps it takes to get to an even, uh, to any given node from any source, okay? The last example here is the uh, shortest path from, uh, for all pairs, because Dijkstra is for shortest path, also known as shortest path single source. So you have a node, a target node you want to optimize, and you start looking for the shortest path considering that single node, okay? Another uh, very interesting uh, problem is the shortest path for all pairs, okay? So we're uh, interested in getting the shortest path for every possible 
uh, traversal on our graph. This is usually solved by a well-known algorithm, which is the flight virtual algorithm, that relies on a, a technique, an optimization technique, which is called dynamic programming, also known as don't repeat yourself. In mathematics, the dynamic programming is a method for solving complex problems by breaking them down into simpler subproblems. It is applicable to problems exhibiting the properties of overlapping subproblems and optimal substructure. So the basic idea is, Memoization. Memoization means cache the value of already solved problems in instead of recomputing every time the same subproblems. We might create a function for memoization in Python in a very elegant way. I like this a lot. We may create a memo decorator which relies on, which exploits the wraps function from uh, fun tools, which wraps is a sort of shortcut for a partial, uh, another uh, fun, uh, fun, uh, fun tools, sorry, function which is partial. And in this case, we create them, this decorator to, uh, in this decorator we create a cache, which is the a dictionary that stores the values of uh, sub-problems, okay? Let's say it, it in action. The flight virtual algorithm is a problem that may uh, rely on the dynamic programming technique. Because the, uh, the basic idea is, uh, let us consider the DUBK be the length of the shortest path that exists from node U to node V. Um, if you're only allowed to use, that you're only allowed to use the first K nodes in, in your graph, right? You can decompose the problem as it follows. The, the distance from node u to node v using the k uh, nodes uh, in your path corresponds to the minimum to the distance uh, from u to v without taking that node, or the cost uh, from that go of the path that goes from uh, u to k and k to v. Maybe this is um, this is uh, more clear in this in this slide. Uh, we might considering whether or not to include the node k in, the, in the, the shortest path, okay? So we calculate the cost of the paths that pass through the k nodes, uh, starting from u and ending to, to v. If this is uh, a not a convenient cost, so if the cost of not taking that node is uh, less than taking that node, we, uh, simply, consider, we simply disregard that node. Uh, otherwise, we include that node, the node k, in the shortest path. We may create the, uh, uh, we may implement the Floyd virtual algorithm in Python, considering, for instance, the uh, addition symmetrics matrix and the distance only uh, solution. In this case, we uh, deep copy the graphs and update uh, in place the, 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 the weights of the, uh, of the distances, but we may also exploit the memoization uh, wraps, sorry for the formatting is very uh, awful, and we may uh, recursively apply the, uh, the, the D function, which is the function that c calculates the distance from nodes, using the memoization. So if we end up to a distance from uh, node U, V, and K are really calculated, the memoization functions avoid to calculate it again and returns the value thanks to the decorator uh, presented before. So that's it, some references, Python algorithms, this is a very introductory book for this kind of stuff. Uh, the algorithm design manual is not actually related to Python, but it's very, a good reference manual. And that's it, thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Valero. Um, any questions? We're, we still have time, it's lunch break. So please feel free to ask questions. Okay. Oh, so, so I think it was a very compact introduction. Thank you very much. I could uh, say, yeah. <laughs>